Now eventually we all end up in a situation where we're working with some table that has no primary key on it and it's got tons of duplicates in it and wouldn't it be great if we could just go to a procedure that we wrote and it would remove all the duplicate records from that table? I'm your host Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to take a look at how to delete records in a table that are duplicates of other records. And we're going to take a look at two ways to delete duplicate records. The first way through a simple query, which is not as flexible. And the second way, which is much more powerful, is of course to use some code to achieve that task. So without further ado, let's get to it. And if you like what you see today, please make sure to smash that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Okay guys, so this is a super cool topic today. Uh, we've got our duplicate orders table here. Um, this is the same file we've been using for the last uh, many episodes and we've got this order table and I created a dupe orders table. It's, you can see it's got some IDs in there. It looks like some foreign keys and it's got you know some description and a price in there. Uh, but you'll notice that uh, some of these appear to make up a key but this table has no primary key and uh, this sometimes happens when you know a lot of users are working on things and somebody will create a table has no primary key and then people are appending records in there left right and center and you're wondering what's going on um, and how can I tame this beast uh, you can imagine this has 56 rows in it uh, you can see there are definitely some duplicates there and just imagine if this had 56,000 rows or 500,000 rows and it had all these duplicates and maybe other users are using the table and uh, we, we, you know, it has no key and so it's, a, you know, that's a, one of the fundamental things that, uh, that we recommend that you do. You can see there's a 1A and there's a 1A, uh, order number one, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see there's, there's a, bunch of duplicates in here and we are going to go and we're gonna uh, uh, first of all uh, we're gonna identify the duplicates and then uh, second uh, thing that we'll do is we'll just close that we're gonna make a new query here I'm just gonna drag that uh, duplicate orders on there um, and so the second thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, uh, first of all I'd be able to extract all of the the unique records uh, but then we're actually going to go and work on that table that has no key because sometimes we just don't have the ability so it looked to me like that uh, division and order ID uh, were foreign keys and then that order item ID was sort of was sort of like uh, uh, you know with the combination of the three uh, that makes up the key and so this is the first lesson you need to learn today is you need to go to that table and you need to identify what fields uh, actually make it unique because we're going to use that later on and we're going to um, we're going to, to uh, use that to our advantage. Now in this select query that I'm making here, I'm going to expand this a little bit. You can see I grabbed the, the star there and the star means I'm getting all the fields. So I'm already getting all the fields, but then I'm going to grab sort of in descending order of what I think the key is the division, order, and then order item, um, those three make up the key, and I've added those past the end of, you know, uh, past the end of the star there. And so I'm going to unclick the show box because they're already included in the star. But I'm going to use this to uh, sort these in the way that I want so that this will uh, show the, the, um, the duplicates. Now I could choose descending like you saw there. You could use descending for all of them if you want to show the last record first uh, or, or ascending if you want to show the first um, the first record first but what you want to do is you want to find those fields that make up as close to the, what you think the key is as possible and then use those to uh, to create a query and so you can see now I've sorted it first by division and then by order and then by order item ID and you can see over on the right here 
Um, there's the, the actual text that's in the record and the price. Now, in this case, these records are true duplicates, uh, which is one case, and you can see there's Monster Puppet has four records that have got all the same IDs, you know, Peter Pan and Pokemon game and, and uh, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. Oh, there, look, Lord of the Rings has like seven duplicates instead of four or something like that. Um, so, or more than that, that might be eight. Anyway, um, uh, so there's a whole bunch of duplicates in there and these are true duplicates because every field matches. Now this is important. So, um, because part of being able to remove duplicates in a table like this is being able to sort it and uh, use the power of sorting um, to, to identify the duplicates and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do our first example because in this case all of we know that every field is the same on every row uh, we can do a make table to basically do a select distinct and output just the rows that we want and that is essentially going to uh, get out the data that we want from our source table. Now, uh, this is sort of a very limited way of doing the duplicate removal. It will give you a table that has the duplicates in it. So I've uh, created my query there and I've saved it as a make table query and I've dragged my dupe orders table onto it. Um, and in this first example, all I'm going to do is grab all of the uh, all of the fields there um, and I'm going to open the SQL view and all I'm going to do to get the duplicates out is to just add the keyword distinct to my make table query and that's the distinct keyword there and I'm going to um, I'll go back to design now that distinct gets saved in there in the SQL so you don't see it in the grid view here uh, but we now have a distinct query and we can we can save that and uh, we'll call it make uh, make no dupes uh, or make no dupe copy and uh, and that's gonna be a make table query that's gonna save a list of all of the uh, unique records in that table and um, and I'll just hit run that's the same as double clicking on it in the uh, navigator on the left. And I'll say yes. It says you, it'll put 14 rows into a table. So now we can see this is the the list of the 14 uh, records that have been duplicated in our in our big table. And uh, you can see there's the the name order item. It's got the name in there, uh, and you can see that the rows are completely uh, unique. And in in the case that every row in this case all of the field entries were the same then this would work for for that case so if you guys are just needing to get a unique list out um, you're already done by creating a make no dupe table uh, make no duplicates table like we did here and that's going to do it now that's a very simple way of getting the data out uh, but many of you are working on a production table um, and you cannot use that uh, make table query and you need to actually delete the rows in the list even though the production table has no key which is a big no-no and uh, and all those kinds of things you actually need to go into that table and you need to delete it and the second thing is is that uh, you are not comparing rows that are exactly the same and so this is where the procedure becomes super powerful I'm just going to save this new uh, this new module. What I did there is I went to the create ribbon, I went to module, and then I, I did a save and I just uh, saved it as dupe removal. And this gives us a new module. And I'm going to make a new subroutine in here and that's going to remove the duplicates. And the reason why it's so powerful is that this is going to allow us to remove duplicates where it's just a key duplicate and the rest of the fields can be, you know, they can be all con they can be all different, and so this is the case where you got a bunch of records coming in, but you only wanted to keep the last record. You didn't want to 
you know, keep, you know, all of the, the, uh, the records, or you only wanted to keep the first entry, uh, and, and you don't want to keep the rest of the records that seem to be getting appended into this table as, du as key duplicates. So that it's a key, it has the same key, but maybe the price was different, or it was a different product, and somehow it got in there, and you need to remove those duplicates, um, which is a, it's a situation that happens sometimes, uh, depending on how different work groups work together, and we're going to take a look at that now. And I should note that this method also allows you to do much more complex evaluation of what's in each record uh, because you can go and evaluate very specifically what the entries are uh, when you do your key deletion um, or when you do your record deletion I should say. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do this is a very common um, algorithm that's used uh, to go through either a table or a list or something where there's multiple entries and we're going to do some comparison. And so I identified that division, order, and item uh, variables. And you can see if I open this dupe query, uh, query that we made where we sorted everything to show the duplicates, um, you can see that's the division, order, and item ID. And then on the right side, there's two fields. Now there could be 15 or 100 fields extra, and you could be do doing comparison with those fields too, but just the key that we think, what we think the key is, is the division order and, and item number, and so uh, we're going to use that, and we're going to we're going to go through, and we're going to loop through the record set, and we're going to delete when we find a duplicate. So remember um, that we've ordered that one query. Now I'm going to open a record set on that query, and that is a single table query, uh, that dupe query there, um, and it's sorted so that the uh, duplicates are all grouped together. Now this is the big power of using this method is that we're using sorting to uh, associate all the duplicates with each other and then as we loop through the record set then we know in relation to before or next the record before or next uh, to a particular record we know whether it's a duplicate or not. And so we're going to use that set RST equal to db.openRecordSet. set. We're going to open the query, which is an updatable query. And the default type uh, record set type is Dynaset. That means that we can update it. And so um, we'll go ahead and, and we'll do a do until RST.EOF, which means end of file. And we're going to loop through until the end of that, till end of file. And we're going to compare the division order and item of the current record to the previous record. Uh, and so there's a method to doing that, that this is just for record sets here, but this method you'll be able to use for all kinds of things. Um, it's not just limited to, to doing record set uh, comparison. You, you'll, you'll find that you'll use this algorithm um, in a lot of different places. It's a very simple algorithm. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some new variables and we're gonna, we're gonna call them our last variables, so it's going to be our our division of the last time of the last record before <laughs> the division uh, the the last order that we looked at and the last item that we looked at, and now we're going to be able to load our all of our variables. So now we've got you know comparing uh, the division, the order, and uh, the item like you see there, and we're going to compare those two variables after we load them each of those sets. And if they all match, then we know that it's a duplicate. And the way that we do that is that we'll seed our last variables uh, so that they have some, vari some value that we know is not going to be matched. In this case, it'll be an empty string for last division. And we'll use uh, order last. We'll set that equal to 0 because we know uh, we don't have any order auto numbers with zero in them and the same with uh, item last. So we've now we've got a sort of starting value for our last variables and so n now as we go through our loop as we look at each record in the sorted record set so there's our loop. Uh, we're going to go through that loop and we're going to look at um, each of the, the sorted records and so 
we know um, that we've got values in there for division, so we're going to grab that um, division. I think it was just called division. Yeah, uh, so I'll just put division in there. So we're going to get that value from the record. We'll get our order number from the record. I'll, that was the order ID. And then the uh, item is going to be the uh, order item ID and from the record. And so now we've loaded the current record that we're looking at. As we go through, we've loaded those variables in there, our division, order, and item. And that allows us to now compare to what the last items were. And so we know if they all match, then this record is a duplicate of the previous record. So um, we know in this first time round on the very first record, obviously it's not going to match because we've got empty string and zero and zero for our last ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an if then statement and if it all matches, then we'll delete it. And if it doesn't match, it won't go into the end, the if statement uh, block and it'll just be ignored. And so it'll leave that record in there. And so we'll say if the division equals the last, last row and if the order equals the last row order ID and if the item ID is the same as the last row, then we know that it's a duplicate. And so at that point, that's when we go RST dot delete. And that is the DAO method for, uh, for deleting the current record when you're in a record set. Um, so, uh, you know, if the division matches and the order matches and the item matches, then we know based off that key that we created, even though it's not a key in the table, it's what we think the key is. If they all match, then we're just going to delete that record. Even if the other fields are different. Now, this is where it's more powerful. So even if, you know, there's other prices that make it non-unique as a row, uh, we can use that division order and item ID, and we can delete that row uh, from the table. Now, in this case, it would be the second, third, and fourth rows will get deleted, and the first row there that is highlighted, that one will stay. And you know, that delete is really the only thing that happens in that block is, you know, if they all match, then just delete it. Otherwise, skip that record. And we're gonna move to the next record after that um, so that the loop progresses until it gets to end of file that you see at the top. There's one more thing that we need to do before we exit out of this loop, which is super important. Um, and uh, we need to now take control of those last variables because now we need to say when we move to the next record or just before we move to the next record we're gonna um, we're gonna set the last variables equal to the current variables uh, so that we know what the previous row values were uh, for the key items that we chose and so um, that's what those three lines are there and that's gonna set all of those uh, those values so that when we go to the to the top of our loop again it's going to load the current variables uh, with the current row variables and then compare them and then right after the loop is done we're going to close it we'll set db equal to nothing we'll also set rst equal to nothing um, and uh, and that's going to clean it up a bit i did not put any error trapping on this today um, this is just to explore the the uh, deletion uh, procedure, uh, but you can definitely see um, that's that's pretty much done here. That's all we really need to do, and uh, we can give it a try. Now this is the basic procedure. Uh, we're going to go back and put a counter in after. I'll do a debug compile, which is going to tell me if there's any obvious programming errors in there, and it looks like it uh, it did that just fine. And so this is the procedure, dupe removal. And I'll put my cursor inside the subroutine and I'll just hit play on the uh, toolbar there and you'll see it just flickered for a minute because that's a very short table. And now we can minimize our code window and we can go take a look at our dupe orders table and see if there's anything in there. Um, so let's go and take a look at that. Now we can see there's the 14 rows uh, that we wanted. 
um, just like we saw in our dew porters fix table which we did with this single query and you can see this has 14 rows and they are unique and that's exactly what we wanted to see here uh, the 14 rows uh, in our, our record count and each of the rows is unique and so now this case did not depend on those last two rows being the last two columns being the same I should say um, like our uh, make table query um, you know um, that's something that makes it much more powerful is that it's not dependent on that now this this dupe order create I'm just going to run this a few times and all that it does is it's just going to put some duplicates back in that table um, so that I can show you how to put a counter in if you want to see a counter in your procedure so I'm just gonna um, I won't save that I just ran it a few times so now we've got um, 56 rows in there okay so there's a whole bunch of duplicates in here again um, and uh, what we can do now is um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna create one little row here just for some feedback if you want it in your procedure you might not uh, if you're running this as you know every day or something and it just doesn't there's no output for it or anything you know on your big production table uh, but if you want to have a counter you can create a long integer as a counter and then just stick it you know um, put an initial value there of zero and then each time you delete in the same block you can just go uh, counter equals counter plus one um, and uh, and then at the very end you could maybe do a message box or or you could put it into say the uh, that the immediate window we'll just put debug.print and then long counter uh, rows deleted or something or records deleted and um, and that'll give us some some feedback or you could maybe it's a function and you, you return how many uh, rows were deleted and you use it for something else uh, but that's something that you can do. So here we go. Here's our table with 56 rows in it. And uh, I'll just go ahead and um, highlight there's one, uh, one row. And here's the duplicate row, uh, 1A4, in our key that we believe the key is. And there's a third one uh, for that. And uh, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can run our procedure and we can see how many exactly how many rows get deleted uh, after our procedure runs and so just like before we'll put our cursor into the inside of the procedure and we can hit play and you can see that was super fast it just zipped through there uh, 42 records deleted and uh, that is exactly what we want to see there and of course here is our table dupe orders which now no longer has any duplicate records in it and uh, that is exactly what we wanted to see and that's how you can remove duplicate rows in your tables even if there's no key want to see more cool and interesting topics in this area make sure to check out my patreon the link is in the description